using ChatGPT. There is a paper that someone is trying to work on. You can literally type in, maybe I want it to sound like a seventh grader. <laughs> you see it. Hello, my name is Breon Martin. I am the AI Communications Project Manager here at Georgia Tech, and we want to welcome you to the first episode of Tech Takes, where we talk to experts here at Georgia Tech. Now, joining us on the first episode is a renowned expert, Celia Chernova. Thank you for joining us. She has a long track record of groundbreaking AI research and also a commitment to advancing the frontiers of knowledge. Thank you, Breon. Thank you for having me. Tell us a little bit about your work at Georgia Tech and just who you are. Sure. So I'm a faculty member at Georgia Tech. Uh, here I direct two things. So first, I direct the Robot Autonomy and Interactive Learning Lab. I also direct AI Caring, which is a national AI institute that's a collaboration between several universities looking at how we can advance AI in support of aging. So how do we help older adults uh, maintain independence and live a healthier and happier life? Let's talk a little bit about the impacts you see AI and this work that you're doing will be in everyday life. I think AI has already permeated all of our everyday lives. Whether you see it or not. Yeah, whether, <laughs> most of the time you don't see it, but and most of the time it's making life better for people. Uh, everything from uh, credit card alerts. I've had phenomenal success with uh, my credit card company catching fraudulent charges and alerting me. And diagnosis of um, various medical conditions, so cancer diagnosis, has much higher success rates today because of the use of AI. And so there's huge, huge impacts on society already. Of course, large language models and things like ChatGPT have really taken over the public conversation in the past year. There's other areas of AI as well, but that's where we're seeing the most rapid growth right now. So it is truly fascinating, just from my experience using ChatGPT, to the different kind of ways you can use this technology. Say there is a paper that someone is trying to work on. You can literally type in, maybe I want it to sound like a seventh grader. Yes. <laughs> you see it. Yes. How do you feel about like just the power that this one app that a lot of people just have on their phones that they can use? Yes. I think more than any other technology, this has been disruptive, like truly the definition of a disruptive technology. Mm -hmm. I think it's wonderful. I think it's going to level the playing field uh, for many, many people in a positive way. It can make um, various things more accessible. There are obviously risks as well. Um, we've all heard a lot of talk about fake news, making fraud more easy uh, to accomplish and, and things like that. So we also have to worry about, you know, as with any disruptive technology, it comes with benefits, yeah. it comes with risks, and we're still working through understanding what, how to handle this. There's a lot of concerns around ethics and privacy when it comes to AI. You see this in every other news story on how policymakers are figuring out how we can leverage this technology or even how to regulate it. What do you see is one of the biggest issues with this topic? Ethics is at the forefront of many, many conversations right now. I think what we're seeing in the last uh, few years is the change in AI from um, simply giving you recommendations to actually generating content, what's called generative AI, right? Generating text through ChatGPT, generating images and art. And so now that we're uh, have AIs generating content, well, where does that content come from? Its main power is to take examples that it's seen and create similar content. And of course, the, there's a huge ethical issues there as far as uh, authorship, as far as uh, rights to the content and the data that's being used. Another ethical uh, boundary is just the, the transparency and trustworthiness of AI. So AI can be used for determining if someone should get a loan. Yep. If, if it says no, what recourse do you have? And why did it say no? And how do you change your life in order th for the answer to be yes, right? The ability to say, you know, I need to be able to understand how the AI is making these decisions that are making a significant impact on my life. As you said, it's growing and trust is very, very important. I know that a few of my friends who use ChatGPT say that, oh, they're giving me these wrong answers and I have to get very specific, but that is very big for a lot of people because people are starting to rely on this kind of technology. Yes, and, and that's something important to understand uh, about technology. It'll keep getting better, yes, 
you know, in a year's time, the next chat GPT is going to be even better and much more powerful. But no matter what, it's not perfect. And, you know, honestly, humans aren't perfect either. I always try to think about it as, yes, technology is just a tool. AI is just another tool. But really understanding those boundaries of what works, what doesn't, when, when does it work or not is really, really critical. Thank you for joining us for the first episode of Tech Takes. For more content like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Georgia Tech Research.